Hello everyone, this is the first part of the video tutorial for creating a mini version of my purse photo um, mini album or photo bag mini album. Um, I have a link in the description box below uh, to the post on my blog where you can find more pictures of this project and to see the close-ups. Um, as for the tools, someone asked me to cover the tools that I use for um, creating my projects. So I hope most of the tools which we will use in the, this part of the tutorial are here on the table. And these are um, A4 size image boards or um, as they call it a medium weight chipboard it's about 1 16th of an inch in thickness and I have here two uh, pieces uh, which we will need for creating the cover we will need uh, currently not more than two uh, sheets of 12 by 12 uh, craft card stock we will need some wet glue and I'm using tacky glue I use it a lot so um, <laughs> you cannot see the name on the packaging but anyway it's the tacky glue we will use some score tape uh, we will use a craft knife of course the rulers are very important I like to use this metal ruler I think you can uh, easily find it in any stationery uh, store. I like to use it because it's very precise and I make all the measurements on my uh, chipboard with it. Uh, sometimes I use a Tim Holtz ruler. It's good for, you know, for, uh, um, for uh, measuring really fast if you want to uh, for example one inch border from all the sides of the cardstock and stuff like that and I'm also using a non-slip ruler this one from uh, Martha Stewart I know that EK Success have uh, something similar I use it for cutting the chipboard so you will see um, you will see me using this a lot now and um, in addition we will use a corner chomper this is um, the one which is a quarter of an inch and um, half an inch um, round uh, corner chomper. We will use, of course, a pencil, a scissors, and um, some distress ink with the inking tool for inking the edges at the later stage of this tutorial. Okay, so uh, on purpose, I haven't yet yet cut all the pieces that we will need for the cover so that you could see how to position them on your uh, A4 uh, piece of um, cardboard or image board or medium weight chipboard so let's see um, we will need two pieces which measure I hope you see that six and a quarter by four and three quarters of an inch we will need one piece which measures Actually, we will need two, uh, which measures um, six and a quarter by two inches. And um, this one here, um, I stated that it's a little bit smaller than two inches, but it's okay. Um, and if you are using an A4 size uh, chipboard, you can um, lay out all the pieces in the same way I did. It's not that... Uh, important that the bottom piece will be a little bit smaller than two inches anyway um, we will need one more uh, which measures four and three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch uh, these are the pots which we um, created on this first sheet of A4 uh, chipboard and um, Let's see, um, I marked here the rounded corners that we will create using the corner chomper. And uh, to create these angled sides, you will just take your ruler and measure three quarters of an inch from two uh, sides of the 
a piece which measures six and a quarter by two inches three quarters of an inch from here and three quarters of an inch from here and then you will draw the lines from the uh, bottom corner to the mark which you created there on top so um, we will see it more clear uh, when we will cut out all the pieces on the second one uh, these are the measurements that you will need to mark and uh, to create the uh, chipboard pieces afterwards uh, this one is six and a quarter by two and three quarters of an inch and next one is five and a quarter by three and a quarter with the rounded corners to pay attention and two more for the side panels of the uh, purse mini album these ones they will be each one two and five eighths of an inch by three and three quarters and uh, to create the angled uh, sides you will need to mark three and eighths of an inch from each let's see from each uh, sides on the top each side on the top and then you will cut this way uh, you will see me doing this shortly as well and now when we have everything marked I will use my non-slip roller and the craft knife to cut everything out and I will start now no matter with what to start let's start with this one and um, okay and cut I cut several times and I'm using my um, self-healing uh, mat for cutting. Okay, so I will do the cuts on this piece uh, in the video and the second one I will cut offline and we'll be back to you once all the pieces are that out okay because actually the camera prevents me from seeing more clear the cut lines okay so let's see these are the side panels and I make the marks in the way that I've just explained to you so now I will be cutting the sides like this okay and the second one too this way okay uh, maybe we will trim them down just a little bit more but not not right now so once you uh, cut them out just um, lay them aside and we will be back to them uh, later so uh, let me cut everything out and I will be back to you all right and I'm back so here are all of the chipboard parts that we will need for creating our purse and I already layered them in the order and that we will be gluing them in to the craft card stock oh one thing that I forgot to do is to chomp the corners here of this uh, tiny panel okay so um, if you cut the um, piece which is a little bit smaller than two inches as I did you will use it here on the um, front flap okay and the one which is exactly two inches will be here on top so this is how you layer them and pay attention this one is exactly two inches this one is a tad smaller than two inches and it's really not important because it will be on the front flap it doesn't influence any of the measurements that we uh, created before so this one will be for the pocket for the front pocket and these two will be for the side flaps by the way on them i also 
create a little uh, uh, I also use a corner chomper but the one which is a quarter of an inch and when you do that try to slightly force your chipboard piece inside the corner chomper okay and then chomp because you see it's a little bit angled so it doesn't uh, smoothly go inside the corner here because it's 90 degrees okay so these three pieces we will uh, put aside for now and we will work on these here if we want to know how uh, long uh, actually how wide our cardstock for wrapping should measure we need to measure our chipboard and I like to leave a border from one inch from top and bottom so our cardstock should be uh, about eight and a quarter inches um, wide and uh, how long it should be well we will measure a little bit later I think it will definitely be uh, let's say 12 and I think it will be something like 7 and 3 eighths of an inch okay so let's take those two pieces of cardstock that we set aside for uh, our project and we will cut one to eight and a quarter and the second one to seven and three quarters you know eight and a quarter sorry first eight and a quarter and then we will trim it to seven and three quarters like this okay so these we don't need for now maybe we will use them for tags which we will put inside the album anyway now let's connect these two together and to do that we will use our uh, score tape I have here the score tape which is one quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch um, and I think that for connecting these two pieces I will use the one which is wider it's a three eighths of an inch score tape so I will apply a strip here on one of the cardstock pieces I will use my uh, burnishing tool which is from bonefolder.com it's a Teflon uh, bone folder I was asked several times so here is the answer okay now let's connect them together and I will use here the uh, lines on my cutting mat as a guide okay Okay, and we'll burnish once again. Now I will use my uh, Tim Holtz ruler, as I told you, to create a guideline one inch from the bottom of the whole cardstock piece, like this. This will allow me to know where exactly to lay down my chipboard pieces and one more guideline guideline from the left side of the cardstock and now I personally use the wet glue for gluing down my pieces to the cardstock but you are welcome to use your ATG guns or um, score tape or any other adhesive that you work with on a regular basis I will use the wet glue and I really like tacky glue it's a real pleasure to work with it it dries fast it holds tight it's perfect and it dries clear One is done. We'll 
burnish and sometimes it's good to flip it over and burnish from the front side too okay now we will uh, use this glue down this one for the spine and uh, between the parts of chipboard that you glue down to your cutstock piece please leave a spacing of about one eighth of an inch you can eyeball it or use uh, several pieces of uh, the same chipboard that you are using for the cover just lay two pieces together and uh, do something like this or use your uh, Tim Holtz ruler this one um, as I do this is exactly one eighth of an inch spacing okay the next one will be the back side of the cover and I recently purchased these uh, precision tips from 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 I don't remember from but I really like them I will post the link to the product pro, uh, to the product in the description box to this video too if you are looking to, for those you will be able to have a look at them and get the notion what I'm talking about okay now the next is the piece which is six and a quarter by two inches exactly okay again i'm leaving a spacing of one eighth of an inch The next one will be this piece here. And the last one will be the tiny piece which measures four and three quarters by three quarters of an inch with the rounded corners on one side. pay attention this side is slightly smaller than one inch but that's okay this is even better because we will wrap it here and we will need to uh, cut it down anyway so now what we do is we take the score tape and we apply the score tape to the uh, chipboard pieces in the following way you start from here and then you tear a piece off and you continue layering your uh, score tape uh, bending it a little bit here and then uh, on top here it's not a problem and then you tear it off Continue on this side, tear it off, continue here, 
get to this place here and bend without tearing bend it curve curve once again without tearing tear off and then glue another piece here on this side okay you don't need the score tape um, here on the rounded angles uh, on the rounded corners sorry because um, either way we will be using the wet glue for uh, covering them now let's uh, make some cuts on this piece the first cuts will be the first part sorry will be here uh, on this corner and we first need to mark the line I'm uh, using my ruler uh, because we need to leave a spacing of about about one eighth of an inch here if we want to get uh, perfect squares once the cardstock will be folded so I'm cutting it this way okay and then what we need to do is let me see okay we will cut it a little bit at an angle here and a little bit at an angle from this side okay now we can uh, fold these three sides and glue them down uh, this will allow us to forget about them anyway okay apply a little bit of score tape on the outer uh, edge of the cardstock too forgot to tell you that and I'm currently talking only about these three sides that we are going to fold and glue down right now okay so we are first kind of teaching our paper to fold the way we want it to fold and then we remove we remove the backing from our score tape and we start from folding and gluing down the longer sides kind of pull uh, the paper towards yourself while you are doing that okay burnish flip uh, here you will need to tear a little bit um, the backing of the score tape but leave the backing on the angled uh, panel okay because we are still not wrapping it start from the middle and work to the sides by pulling the paper towards yourself once again oh some shaking here i'm sorry the table is not very steady okay now when you um, wrap the side first um i don't know how to call it by kind of smash and um uh, create um, oh my god how to explain that actually you see how I did that so do the same guys I'm sorry uh, I am short for words right now I hope you understand me okay I really hope you do okay now let's just burnish on the side like this this will give us a perfect cover once it's finished okay now let's go on um, here what you will need to do is the following you will cut the cardstock in this way and in this way Okay, so this will create 
a flap which looks like this and the same at the bottom all right you can already glue it down but before you glue it down take your score tape again and apply the score tape on the flap up to the cut and the same thing here up to the cut and a small piece in the middle just to uh, make sure that it will be secure okay like this and like this now we are ready to glue them down so I'm taking off the backing and I'm folding it and gluing down sticking down this piece here like this now the same from this side all right don't forget to burnish now uh, let's find the fold lines again okay uh, now we've reached the top flap and we will kind of uh, repeat the shape of it and cut the paper in the following way all right now the additional cuts that we will need to make are here and here all right um, and now you will make some more cuts on the rounded corners here let's see it will be one two three four five cuts it's quite important how many kite cuts you have and you will even trim them shorter make them shorter and you will soon understand why so once again uh, we are making one two three and four cut lines which uh, gives us five uh, tiny cut flaps okay and we will trim them down a little bit more so before you start folding the corners you can already fold this flap here and let's say we will use another piece of piece of a uh, score tape here okay so stick it down now we need to wrap those corners okay we will remove the backing from the uh, score tape which is left and now we will apply a little bit of wet glue on these tiny flaps which are left and we will start folding this way one from the side and another from the side holding down pressing down to ensure the stick okay then one more from the side and another from the bottom and then the one in the middle if you fold it in this order it will give you a pretty nice um, rounded corner now the uh, craft cardstock I'm using is really thick so if you see uh, there are some uh, uh, not very round um, marks from the cuts that I've created but it's not a problem because I will use my uh, burnishing tool and I will smooth them 
to make them look round. I don't know what kind of paper you will be using, but I hope you will achieve a nice result with your paper too. Okay, uh, once it's uh, distressed and covered with additional paper, it will not uh, look like this. It will look it will look better here you can see anyway let's continue uh, to the uh, second piece here again we will apply the glue okay and we will start folding from the sides moving uh, to the middle one more there and the middle part middle piece here and we've trimmed the paper down because we didn't want uh, too much bulkiness here in the corner okay so once again I will burnish and press down and round the corner and the cover will be almost done almost if you don't like the result that much you can always use your I don't know nail file or any other uh, similar tool uh, there is another one from Tim Holtz which looks like this and there is another one from Prima let me show you which looks like this, but I, for some reason, uh, still like to work with a simple nail file from a dollar st store uh, to work on the corners. Okay, like this, really slightly. Uh, I'm not trying to take off a layer of paper just to uh, to round them a little bit okay like this where is the focus okay like this uh, great now let's find those fold lines again of the cover and we will be able to see what exactly we are creating here